lights are green, the race is on, and it's Randy Momoa from the inside pole position sweeps to the outside to take the early lead as they go around Redgate Corner for the first time, a very tight-knit group. That's the difficult corner, all safely round, and on the first time, the sweep down through Craner Curves and Hollywood, 25 laps, and the finest riders in the world competing here. It's Randy Mamola, number three, from Kenny Roberts, number one, and number seven, Barry Sheen. Mamola, runner-up in the World Championship for the past two years, being chased by the men who have held the championship since 1976 between them till this year. Randy Mamola, the 21-year-old from Santa Clara, California, Kenny Roberts, number one behind him, then it's number seven, Sheen, and then it's number four, Crosby. They're the first four in the makings of another tremendous race here at Donington, and what a way to celebrate 50 years of racing with this sort of racing. Onto the fastest part of the circuit, up through the gearbox, reaching somewhere in the region of 150 miles an hour. And Graham Crosby, a better start that time, and he's there up with the leaders. Kenny Roberts, much better this time. He was finishing fifth in the first race. But he's really got uh, young Randy Mamola in his sights. Lap one completed. And Graham Crosby appears to be dropped just a little now. Randy Mamola on the work Suzuki leading the two works Yamahas of Kenny Roberts and Barry Sheen. Graham Crosby still holding on to the fourth spot and Phil Reed the makings of another tremendous leg. Well, nice to see Kenny up here, obviously determined to redeem his poor position in the first leg, which uh, we understand he ran onto, gra onto the grass and lost a lot of ground. You can see he's really determined to uh, reverse and get in front of uh, Mamola. Down to McLean's, they're on lap number three. Mamola, Roberts and Sheen. Graham Crosby still holding on to the fourth place, riding machine number four, but this is the battle, and Kenny Roberts seems to just be sussing out where possibly he can take the young pretender to his crown. He calls them, they're very great friends, despite being on rival factory machines. And in fact, it was Kenny Roberts who gave young Randy a lot of help when he first started racing. Randy first came to England a couple of years ago and started off in the 250cc class. Very quickly got his hands on a 500. And Randy Mamola hits Kenny Roberts has lost it. Kenny Roberts, the world champion down. My word, Kenny Roberts chasing Randy Mamola. And Kenny Roberts dropped it. But he's on his feet, as you can see. Kenny Roberts okay. The rest of the field streaming through. But Kenny Roberts really came a pearl of air. Randy Mamola, Barry Sheen, into Copper's Corner, cranking it over, round there in third gear, round about 70 miles an hour. And Sheeny having a go on the inside, is he? No, Mamola still holds it, looks over the shoulder, and indeed, a rider off there. The machine is on fire, the machine is on fire, and the rider there, the uh, flags will be shown, slowing the riders down. There's the machine blazing away. That's going to be a very second-hand machine. We can't identify the rider, I'm afraid, for you, but uh, the machine on fire, the extinguishers out very quickly indeed. That's the signal that the race is to be stopped. So in the 350 World Championship, the lights are green, the rerun is on, it's 15 laps, and it's Randy Mamola yet again. Has made a good start, so is Barry Sheen on the inside, but it's Mamola leading as they go into Redgate for the first time. Number five, Cork Wellington. And Graham Crosby, number four, was last away, but he's carving his way through the field. Down through Hollywood and Craner Curves. And it's Randy Mamola, number three, this young Californian out in front, yet again. This appears now under Starkey's grid. Barry Sheen is up there in second place, and the green outfit of Corky Wellington tells us he is in third place. But Randy Mamola back in the position he held around McLean's for the first time in this rerun. Bellington, then it's number 10. Number 10 is Bernard Farr. Number 16 was Keith Ewan. Number 13, that was Chris Guy. But look at the way Randy is hanging off this machine even more than usual. Barry Sheen is still up there in second place. And Cork Bellington with the 500cc Kawasaki. He was a double world champion in 250 and 350 racing. A couple of years ago, he won the championship two years running in both classes. Now on the 500, and this year gave Kawasaki their best placings on the 500 with two third places in the Grand Prix. 
So lap one completed with Mamola leading Sheen and Ballington into Redgate. The Works Suzuki against the Works Yamaha. Graham Crosby, number four, after that bad start, has fought up to 10th place, but he's got an awful lot to do. He did a lot in the first leg, but I wonder, Phil, can he do it again? 10th position now after being last away, Graham Crosby. Can he fight his way through and catch the leaders who are Mamolo and Sheen? I don't know. I think he's pretty demoralized uh, by now after seeing two ace riders fall off in front of him. Um, obviously, he'll be trying his best to, uh, to catch up, but uh, the way the leaders are going at the moment uh, will be uh, very doubtful. Amola and Sheen, perfect harmony, perfect unison, a little wheelie there from Amola as they come up to Columbus now, changing down through the box to third gear, 70 miles an hour. Barry possibly in a little wiggle there from Amola and Sheen tries to overtake him, but almost side by side as they come down under Starkey's Bridge, under the Dunlop Bridge, I should say, on Starkey's Trade, 150 miles an hour. The braking is going to be vital, and it's Mamola who still holds on to the lead. Mamola and Sheen complete two laps. Cork Ballington there, the green outfit, machine number five, still in third place. Barry Sheen really taking a very wide line. Cork Ballington from South Africa on the Works 500cc Kawasaki holding on to third place and holding on pretty well from the flying twosome in front of them, Mamola and Sheen. Graham Crosby has moved up into eighth place. That's two places up since the previous lap. That is Cork Ballington. Machine number five, the Green Meanie is the nickname of the Kawasaki. Not hard to understand why everything is green, including the leathers. Momoa from Santa Clara, California, runner-up in the World Championship again this year. Barry Sheen really putting the pressure on. You see, Randy looked over his left shoulder, but Barry Sheen was at his right. Coppice, Ballington has come up to join in the merriment. On the fastest part of the circuit, the first three, Mamola, Sheen, and Ballington. Breaking, changing down through the gearbox, 50 miles an hour, through the chicane, Mamola, Sheen, and Ballington as close as that. Accelerating, and you can see Barry Sheen absolutely tucked down behind that fairing. Again, going for that wider line, you'd think they were going into a different corner, wouldn't you? You see, Peter, the Barry's uh, now followed Lucanelli and found a faster line out. He nearly passes uh, the leader up on the inside. And the leader, Randy Mamola, is lapping in 1 minute 15.18. A little slower than before, just about a second down, or maybe a second and a half on the laps he was putting up before the race was stopped. Peter, I think you can now see uh, Barry weighing Mamola up. And, and how he can get past him on the on the last couple of laps, you see, especially into the last section of the uh, the circuit here. Coppice corner on lap number seven. Number sixteen, Keith Ewan, we understand, has had a spill. Keith Ewan, the former British champion, out of this particular race. Mamola, Sheen and Ballington as close as that. In fact, he's pulled up number 16, not a spill. Number 16, Keith Ewan, okay, but out of the race. And there's the first, second and third with Cork Ballington on that experimental Kawasaki doing extremely well to hold on to the work. Suzuki and Yamaha ahead of him. And Barry Sheen is through. Barry Sheen has done it. Nipped inside at Redgate and Barry Sheen leads Randy Mamola as we are now on lap number eight and they're just about half distance now with seven and a half laps completed the reason taking the world of sports superbike challenge this year the final round held on saturday barry won all three of them and mamola there using every bit of the road trying to uh, and the difference now, I've been told, Barry Sheen, Graham Crosby is 0.90 seconds only, 0.9 of a second only. And Crosby moving up now on Ballington. Number five is Cork Ballington. Number four, Crosby almost lost it there. The severe braking, the rear end is wiggled. He controlled it, and he's now got...
about Paul Fellington in front of him. Is it Redgate? He's going to make his move. They're both taking the wide line. Crosby dives inside. Has he done it? The faster line he has. And Fellington goes through. <laughs> and Reed takes it. Oh, superb stuff indeed. Barry Sheen. He's around Coppers now for the 15th and final time. And what a reception he's getting from the 40,000 crowd here at Donington Park. Down the final straight. Just the chicane now, a second gear corner. Waving as he goes through the chicane. The crowd roar and wave to him. Barry Sheen popped to Wheelie across the line. And who is going to take second place? Well, I think Mamola just got it from Crosby, but my word, that was close. So that means that Barry Sheen finishes up with a first and a third over the two legs. Randy Mamola only just took the second place from Crosby. If he took the second place from Crosby, he finishes up with a first and a second place. And times will have to be confirmed. Barry Sheen won by three. 3.56 seconds, 3.56 seconds, so it all has to be worked out, and it looks as if that could be enough, because the time difference in the first race, Randy Mamola was 43, 31 minutes, 44.63, Barry Sheen was 31 minutes,